Well, if we're given an equation, we can determine what the inverse is. Now, inverse is just switching of x and y values. And for now, that's what we're just going to consider it is. We're just taking the x's and the y values, and we are switching them around. So to find the inverse of a function is fairly straightforward, especially if we have a function like this, which is quite bit simple. We have this function, f of x equals negative 4x plus 4. And we want to determine what is the inverse of the function. What is the equation of the inverse of this function? Well, the first thing we have to do is everywhere there's an f of x, we're just going to replace that with y. So y is going to equal negative 4x plus 4. And now what we do is we go and we switch. Remember, it's just switching the x's and y's around. So let's just switch y for x and x for y. And now what we have to do is we need to solve for y. So we've done that switch, and now we have to manipulate our equation so we can solve for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, and I'm going to get x minus 4 equals negative 4y, and divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, and I'm going to get a y value equal to x minus 4 over 4, which if I come up here, that's the same as y is equal to, sorry, got my negative on the bottom there. That's the same as negative x over 4 minus 4 over negative 4, which becomes negative x over 4 plus 1. But now what we have to do is we have to switch back to that notation. So this is now the inverse. So we have to indicate, because our function was originally given a name, f of x, the inverse has to be given that using that notation of negative f of x just like so. So f to the negative 1 of x is equal to negative x over 4 plus 1. That is the inverse of our function. That's all we have to do. Now, if we were to take this inverse function and compose it with the original function, we would get a value of x. So when you're trying to find the inverse of an equation or inverse of a function, these are the steps that we take. And it doesn't matter how scary or ugly the function is, you always follow these simple four steps. So the first thing we want to do is if it's given with function notation, f of x, we're going to take the f of x and replace it with y. Then we switch to the y and x values around. Remember, that's what inverse is, the switching of those x and y values around. Then what we do is we take that new equation with the switched variables, and we solve it for y, doing all the math necessary to solve it for y. And then we replace that new y value with that inverse notation for a function, f to the negative 1 of x. And this is all you do every single time, through these four steps. So it doesn't matter what the function is, if you're given the equation, you follow these four steps. So let's look at a tougher example. So here's a function, and you're asked to determine the inverse of this function. We want to determine the equation specifically. So what do we do? Well, let's go back. What's our first step? We've got to replace f of x with y. So that's all I'm going to do, is I'm going to go to my function, and I'm going to change f of x into y equals x squared plus 8. That's just step one. So step two. Switch the x and the y values around. That's all I'm going to do. Let's go back here, and we're going to switch wherever there is or not y, and replace it with an x. Nothing else changes. OK, so step three, solve the equation for y. Now, this is where the math gets a little bit difficult, depending on the, how complicated the original function is. But for grade 11, we can do these types of functions. We can solve for y in this value. So all we need to do is we need to take the 8, move it to the other side, and we're going to get x minus 8 equals y squared. 
And I'm just going to move this around so y squared is going to equal x minus 8. And now what we want to do is we want to solve for y, not y squared. So remember, if we have something squared, we need to take the square root. And if we do one thing to one side, we got to do the same thing to the other. Now remember, anytime you're taking the square root, we always need to take the plus and the minus. So let's not forget that plus and minus. It's a very, very important part. So this tells you that y is going to equal plus and minus the root of x minus 8. We have now taken our function and we solved it for our new y. So that was step three. And what's the last step? Well, we have to take our function and replace the new y with f to the negative 1 of x. And that's all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take it. It was originally called f of x. So our new function is f to the negative 1 equal to plus and minus the square root of x minus 8. There is our inverse. So pretty straightforward if we just follow that step-by-step -step process. Now, if we look at this inverse a little carefully here, if we have a plus and a minus value here, that's going to say that for every x value, we're going to get two y values. So right away, if we notice that, we're going to see that the inverse of this function is not a function. And that's perfectly OK. Basically, we've taken a function, we found its inverse, and the inverse is now a relation. It's not a function because there's more than one y value for any x value. And so we're going to have to be ca cautious of that a little bit later on when we talk about inverses and their functions, or sorry, functions and their inverses, I should say, because every function, the inverse is not necessarily a function. It could be a function, but it doesn't have to be.